It was a hearing seen throughout the world. And now the Holy See's UN Nuncio, Monsignor Silvano Tomasi, is talking about his impressions after presenting before the Committee Against Torture. It happened on May 5th and 6th in Geneva. For some members of the committee, there was an open attitude to understand the positive steps taken by the Holy See in the last 10 years or so. For others, there was a, a less openness. The main rapporteur in particular seemed to have had an agenda of her own to extend the mandate of the Convention Against Torture and the mandate of the committee itself. But the nature and purpose of the committee is that of monitoring the implementation of the treaty, not to change it. As such, the committee is not a court which can pass judgment. So the panel of experts asks the Vatican the delegation about its handling of sex abuse of the cases. The panel also criticized the Vatican's stance against abortion. Tomasi says answering those questions wasn't the problem, but rather the panel's ideological mindset. In addition, penalties imposed by the civil authority, the Holy See exercises a further spiritual penalty upon clergy guilty of crimes of sexual abuse of minors, including removing the person from the clerical state. As I mentioned to the committee, the example of 848 clerics dismissed from, the, from, the, from their status as priests from 2004 to 2013 is a clear indication that the Holy See has not been without uh, concern or inactive. The Holy See cannot interfere in the sovereignty of other nations as this would be a violation of international law. So instead of a crime committed by a person under the jurisdiction of Vatican City State would have to be prosecuted by that state. Tomasi also highlighted the points where the UN and the Holy See look eye to eye. Issues like poverty, human trafficking and helping refugees. At issue, he says, is that some UN officials try to promote their ideological views and not the consensus of member states. The excesses of some functionaries or experts employed by the UN who tend occasionally to promote their ideological conviction instead of following the conclusions arrived at democratically by the member states offer the occasion for legitimate criticism. He says the fact that Pope Francis met with UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon at the Vatican, along with leading officers of UN agencies, funds and programs, shows that the interaction and dialogue between the Holy See and the UN is real and useful.